Welcome everyone to a special interlude edition of Baseball Bingo that has no bingo, but there is baseball, I think. Oh no, now I have myself not muted. Ah, okay, there we go. I unmuted it so I could collect drops for like the first 10 minutes. Oh, how's everyone doing? Uh, I hope you all are having a great week. My week's been okay. Hope your baseball teams, your perfect teams and whatever are doing great. Hey, you know this guy? Yeah. Um, so let's discuss what we're doing and why. Uh, we're going to get straight into it because we have a lot to cover tonight. Okay, so back at the beginning of the month, uh, during the, uh, during one of, uh, DRC's, uh, Practice Makes Perfect League streams, also known as Pimple, um, oh, there was some confusion, confusion as to what ratings are trying to emulate and what they mean within the context of the game. And I was trying to explain to people in chat, and I, re and I realized that a lot of people, particularly some of you guys who play Perfect Team more, and even some of you who play, play franchises, don't know what stuff, movement, control, contact, avoid case, what it's trying to t tell you uh, in those ratings. So my popular demand, we are doing a kind of tutorial where I am literally going to go through every rating on the screen and tell you what it's trying to tell you, basically. Um, we do need to establish some ground rules here before we begin. One, this is not an exhaustive list of everything every rating does, how it is calculated. Um, otherwise, we would be here for like three weeks, probably still just doing pictures. Uh, I will be oversimplifying a lot of things because math is really rude and I'm bad at it, usually. Um, and also because I don't want to overcomplicate it for most people. Uh, two, while this information is geared toward your franchises, it is still helpful for Perfect Team in understanding what ratings are telling you. For the most part, like 90% of the time, the the ratings are still gonna apply here uh, as age 38 explain yeah w wow uh, it's funny you mentioned that uh odp meme word you already won the cy young award in 1902 uh rule three um please don't backseat game i guess um yeah please <laughs> and other things, other things we need to, to go over. Um, I, I will briefly touch on the editor a bit. Uh, okay, so last thing. This is divided into three sections. We are, we are di dividing this into pitching, hitting, and fielding. Unfortunately, we will have to leave our Tigers behind for fielding because dead ball fielding is questionable. Uh, if you have questions, wait till the appropriate section, end of the section. We are going to be going in that order. Pitchers, hitters, and fielders. So get your notepads ready to write down questions. Are we ready to start? Yes? No? Um, we, we're starting with Cy Young here just because I think he's a, he's among... Listen, the dead ball period is rough, and he's a little bit easier to look at. Um, one question. What is the one question, Cardinal fan, before we begin? Or watch the VOD later. That's true. You could do that. Although I think I know what Cardinal fan's question is. Is there Chuck Norris in this stream? There is an opportunity for Mike Trout perhaps later. If we get through everything, we can potentially go into a modern start and look at players and talk about players and why or why they are not good at their positions, uh, depending. Um, that's, I'm gonna, it, we'll see what our time looks like. We'll see if that's what you guys want. 
Um, so I guess let's start. Okay, pitchers. What is a pitcher? A pitcher is a uh, type of vase or uh, container that you can pour liquid into drink, not the types of pitchers we're talking about. Um, so pitchers are the people that throw the balls at the batters to hit. Was Cy Young always this old? Well, presumably in 1867, he was not. Um, we are in the tutorial, Tigers. This is a tutorial dead ball save. Um, normally we play as the Tigers, but our, we will actually look at a Tigers pitcher in a minute, but Cy Young here is a little bit easier. So pitchers will have three main pitching ratings and then pitches. So they have stuff, movement, control, and then their pitches. So what are stuff, movement, and control trying to tell you? No, <laughs> 1867 was amazing. So stuff, movement, and control are tied to your three true outcomes. Stuff is tied to strikeouts, movement is tied to home runs, and control is tied to walks. Now, all of these stats for pitchers are sort of interconnected and it's kind of complicated. So we're just going to go down the line, but what I am going to do is if you're doing a challenge mode, just say if you can't see this stuff, make a quick start, start. But pitching ratings are all down here. You can see that you have, this is where your pitches are. This is where your stuff, movement, and control are. And a lot of this stuff, particularly the pitches, is going to affect your stuff, movement, and control. Okay, so let's talk about stuff. Stuff is tied to strikeouts. The higher the stuff, the more strikeouts your pitcher is going to have. In general, the best pitchers, in general, not necessarily exclusive, the best pitchers are going to have higher stuff because stuff equals strikeouts. Stuff is tied to certain types of pitches. It is tied to velocity, um, but higher stuff is better, usually. Um, movement. Movement is tied to home runs. Lower movement, higher chance of throwing home runs. It, it is tied to um, like your ground ball, fly ball ten tendency. So higher movement, you are more likely to not have to be to do more ground ball stuff. Lower movement, more likely to have lots of home runs being given up. Bug reports were actual bugs. Okay, control. Control is said before tied to walks. Lower control means you're not throwing in the strike zone. You're throwing wild pitches. So low control means low control is bad. So obviously, you want to have high, high things in all these categories. Are, are you guys with me so far? Um, you'll see a lot of people arguing over what is better, higher stuff, higher movement, higher control. A lot of this is preference, a lot of this is how you're constructing your team, but also it can be dependent on era. I'm not gonna go here and tell you, oh yeah, higher movement is always better because like for instance, this is the dead ball era and higher movement uh, is better in this era. But if you're playing in something like 1920, uh, you tend to want higher stuff. If you're playing in the modern day, you just better hope all of your stats are fantastic. Yeah, lots of blue is good. Green is acceptable. When I'm evaluating a pitcher, when I'm looking at stuff, movement, and control, um, I tend to want two out of three of stuff, movement, and control to be in the green. Um, obviously, depending on your situation and the type of pitcher you have, that's not always possible. But yeah. As far as which one I like the most, I tend to like higher stuff more than uh, the other stats. But this is very much going to be dependent on your league. This is very much going to be dependent on like your fictional saves and the era that you are in. 
What tells you what you are wanting and why do you want different things in different eras? We're going to actually come back to that question um, in a second. Um, actually, actually, we can talk about it now. So, two out of three ain't bad. So, you need to, so if we're talking about different eras, in different eras of time, players are doing different things. In the dead ball era, players are not hitting for power that much. So movement is very, very good. Higher movement, you know, less home runs. So you want to prevent those hitters from hitting a lot. Uh, and most of your pitchers are going to have actually a profile that looks a little bit more like this, where you have lower stuff, higher movement, lower control, to form this little, like, E with an extended thing. Um, if you're confused and you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, a great way to check is to go to your uh, reports and info and take a look at the player rankings. Go down to your top 20 pitchers, take a look at the profiles and see what they look like. Um, so you can see here that as we, as we go, we have a bunch of different stuff going on here, but in general, we're dealing with higher control and movement and the pitchers that do not have higher control or movement I have higher stuff. But so you can see that stuff is not the main, the main thing that we're focusing on for most of these guys here. It's usually movement or control. So just go down. Uh, this, this type of profile, this particular like really high stuff, lower movement, lower control, starts to become more prevalent as the dead ball era uh, progresses particularly between 1920 and 1940 most of your pictures are going to end up looking a lot like this um, when you start to get into the 50s and 60s and hitters start to really pick it up uh, your pitchers really need to start doing basically everything um, in general though high stuff is not gonna like murder you um, one of the reasons so, so here's an interesting guy, Noodles Han. Um, you can see his stuff is really low, but his movement and control are so much higher that they actually can make up for this lower stuff. Um, if you have a pitcher that has one really low rating, but two much higher ratings, generally they can play pretty well. Um, because those ratings can make up for it. So in this instance, the control is actually making up for the stuff. And have it, but I find that having really, really high stuff can sometimes make up for both movement and control, whereas movement and control being high usually can only make up for stuff or the other rating. Otherwise, you need both. Um, great baseball scout meatloaf. Okay, so let's go back to Cy Young here, because like Chapman, uh, Chapman is a little bit of a different scenario. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, we, we will actually talk about that pitcher archetypes more when we go through all these ratings. So we are, we are not going to get into order of operations on this stream. So pitches. So what are pitches? Apart, apart from things that we throw that have names. Pitches are, the, the, what these pitches are trying to tell you, it's a numerical value of how good a pitch is. And there's different ones. There's fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, screwball. Now, pitches can do different things. In general, and we're not gonna go through what every single one does because for the most part, it's not, it's not that interesting. Pitches generally do one of two things. They will either increase your stuff or movement or change splits. Some pitches uh, ha or may will make a pitcher have a more neutral split. Some pitches will cause a reverse split. Some of them... Uh, will make it more splitty to one side. Um, so, and then pitches can also affect your stuff in particular. More pitches is better. 
Um, more pitches is higher stuff, basically. Um, will, will increase the amount of stuff you have uh, just by having them. Can you throw an example of each pitch? Oh, I, I don't think so. Um, there are two pitches I want to talk about in just specifically really quickly, which are sliders and knuckleballs. Uh, knuckleballs are pretty well known. They are a lower velocity pitch. Um, so having a knuckleball will actually reduce your velocity, which you can see on the, the right. We'll, we'll get into that in, in a little bit. Um, but they, they will reduce your velocity. Um, but they they will affect BABIP, so they will increase the BABIP of the pitcher. So um, they're harder for hitters to hit. And then the other one are sliders, which are just broken and can totally increase your stuff. So we can see here that Cy Young here actually has a 40 slider. So see how he, whoops, whoops, um, see how he has six of stuff here? I'm actually going to increase his slider to show you. So we're going to just increase his slider here to, hmm. We're just going to increase it to 100 on both here. Uh, this Actually, this didn't. No, I did not do it right. Darn it. OK, well, it's not working. Um, and we will be here forever. Uh, I, I know what I'm what I'm, I'm not doing. And I, I just it will be here forever if I try to like troubleshoot it. Um, so yes. Are you able to instruct a pitcher to learn a specific pitch? Uh, no, they just pick them up. Um, but yeah, so you can mess around in the editor here. You can actually go and you can add pitches. You can um, subtract them. You can change ratings. So you, you can go in here um, and mess with that. Um, it's not working for me because I have like recalc statistics on. So it's... It's not working. Um, but yeah, so pitches are pitches. Uh, in general, go after more pitches. Click the pull down on the side of speed. Can the speed be increased is why I ask. Uh, so he, all of this stuff is is related. So like, yeah, we, here, I can show you. So Psy, let's make Psy 100 miles an hour. Um, it's, it's not going to do much because it's... In, in this save, like you can go and you can increase this stuff. It's not going to work in this save because I have that disabled right now. Um, but yes, in theory, you can go and you can edit these stats. Um, we just can't do that right now. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about, th this is a pretty standard pi starting pitcher archetype. Uh, we'll go over how the game handles starters versus relievers versus closers. But we are first going to jump over to column number two, where it says other pitching ratings. Okay, ground ball fly. All these other pitching ratings are being determined by stuff, by movement, by control, by the pitches themselves, um, by the speed, like all of this other stuff is very interconnected and very complicated. And like I said before, we will be here all night if I try to explain how these are interacting with it, with each other. Play around in the editor and you'll see. But ground ball fly ball tendency is your tendency to have ground ball or fly ball. So if I can show you in the editor here, uh, Sai is a, is a neutral dude here, but uh, you can see that, not that that's this hitting thing. Um, if we were to change these, so like uh, change some of this stuff, he might change to either be fly ball or ground ball. It's extreme ground ball, ground ball, neutral, fly ball, extreme, fly ball. So... Uh, interesting how Cy Young has all green blue, but not good individual pitches, or is one below the pull down. So he has one extra pitch here. Um, it, it has to do because it's pulling from real statistics. Um, generally, you can have good stuff moving in control and poor pitches. Having a lot of pitches like this is useful, even if they're poor. This is something that you'll see in a lot of your uh, historic saves where you have 
players with really poor uh, pitches here, but fantastic stuff, movement and control. Usually doesn't doesn't fly in modern saves. Won't work. And yeah, creating pitchers is a butt. So yeah, ground ball fly ball tendency is where the pitch is going to go. So if you think about it in like more modern terms, you can think of like Dallas Koichel, who uh, is a ground ball pitcher. When he throws and pit, uh, batters make contact, they tend to have ground balls. And then there's some uh, pitchers that are more fly ball pitchers. So when they make contact, you know, the pitch will go into the outfield. So that's what that's t telling you. Yes, extreme ground ball will affect movement and raise it by a lot. So we're actually just getting to that. So if you see a pitcher with low movement and they are extreme fly ball, avoid them like the plague because they're just going to give up tons and tons and tons and tons of home runs. And like home runs are not fun because um, unless your team is hitting them, then we like them. But if you're giving up a lot of home runs, then you're probably not going to win, uh, even in the dead ball era. <laughs> okay, so velocity is how fast uh, a pitcher throws. Again, that's tied to your pitches, to your stuff. Um, it Pitchers throw varying speeds. Um, faster is generally better, but like obviously don't just get a pitcher that has like a hundred miles an hour and then like is all in the red for every stat you love extreme fly ball pitchers oh no uh arm slot this is just like how they pitch um i believe we've done some you can see there's submarine sign arm normal three fourth and over the top i know there's a bunch of people that like submarine a lot in my experience it there's negligible um it's it just supposed to emulate like, oh, how the pitcher is throwing the ball. Uh, in my experience, it doesn't do much. Um, no movement should be high. Uh, well, I mean, it does lead to slightly lower volume. It's rough with low movement. Yeah, if you see low movement, just avoid avoid fly ball. Does arm slot affect splits? Yes, um, it, it can. Um, it's supposed to. I have never really noticed a huge difference. Uh, and then pitcher type, there's different types of pitchers. Finesse pitcher, power pitcher, you know, neutral. Uh, this this is just, you know, the amalgamation of what these ratings are trying to put you in like a class. Uh, it's helpful for coaching. Like sometimes you want to get like coaches that are finesse coaches or power coaches. Um, otherwise, it's not really that that really relevant thing okay so you'll see that you'll have a projected rule in whatever league you have your current uh and th and then uh the stamina and hold runners current will just tell you if they're starting or relieving or being a closer stamina is uh how many pitches a pitcher can throw more stamina tends to mean that they are a starter <laughs> Uh, less stamina means you probably have to stick them in your bullpen. Not necessarily. You're calling an actual bingo game? That is fantastic. You are the true bingo star, uh, Mithoki. Yeah, our owner is mad at us. Uh, hold runners is how well a pitcher um, holds runners on base without them stealing. Higher means that they're less likely to run. The The... the the runners are less likely to steal, like to try to run. Lower means that they have an increased chance of stealing. So that's what pitchers are. So there's different archetypes of pitchers. Um, here we can see a starter. So one of the things does does holding runners hurt fatigue? Uh, I don't think it does. Um, it's in a hundred years. You're not going to single one of them. Yes. Um, I've never seen it affect fatigue, like, at all. Um, they, they, I believe, are independent stats from one another. But so one of the questions you get, that I often get, is how do you tell whether or not a pitcher is a starter or reliever? So the way that the game likes to classify pitchers is starter, reliever, and closer. Um, and you can generally use 
very easy ways to tell uh, if you have a starter, a reliever, or a closer. So starters, starters will have high stamina, usually green or blue. Sometimes they can be, they can be less, but usually green or blue. Starters will tend to have uh, decent stuff, movement, and control. Um, sometimes their stuff is lower than their movement or control. Sometimes it's not very era dependent. Starters usually have more than three pitches. Three or more is the rule of thumb for starters. Um, more pitches, more good pitches, better. Less pitchers, not so good. There does appear to be from some limited uh, analysis that some people have done and that I was reading about last week when I was preparing for this, uh, that more pitches has an effect on a uh, FIP rating. So more pitches, lower FIP. Cannot confirm, but in my observed experience, that is true. Uh, so your starters, you don't want to have two pitches for starters. I don't, for starter, I don't care who tells you that it's good. I have never seen it work well in my games. So I wouldn't do it. Sorry, not sorry, Roldis Chapman. Relievers. So relievers and closers are a little bit different. We're going to talk about relievers. These are the guys that are um, coming in after your starter is done. So relievers tend to be guys who are don't have as much stamina or are worse starters. One, yeah, it works with knuckleballers and no one else. I don't... I've had mixed experience with knuckleballers too. Like I wouldn't even do it with a knuckleballer, but like more power to you if you want to try. So it's a little bit hard. Um, I'm actually going to go back to the Americans because in the Americans have a little bit better pitching than we do. Um, but so here's an example of someone you throw in the bullpen, uh, Win Kellum. You can see he has three pitches, so he doesn't have four. Doesn't mean he couldn't start, but less likely of a chance. Um, but his stuff, movement, and control is much lower than Cy Young. So he's going into the bullpen. Now, when this is something... Uh, also, with starter, you want to see a fastball cutter or splitter? Uh, I mean, like, you don't really have to. I would also appreciate not really backseat gaming. That was one of the things I said not to do. I'm trying to simplify things. Uh, I would say take slider over all those pitches for a starter. Um, but in general, you have guys who can't really start as your relievers. Either that's due to stamina or because they just have lower ratings. One thing that does not happen in perfect team in this cycle that does happen in your franchise saves there is a stuff boost when you move people into the bullpen here i'm going to show you if i set win kellum as a starter he loses stuff you get a boost of about five to ten depending on how you have your ratings system set up um so in general if you see a pitcher like this with slightly lower stuff but has okay pitches and okay movement and control so for the dead ball uh era this would be passable just stick them into your bullpen to get a little stuff boost and there passable reliever so closers close there's a very t specific closer archetype that doesn't really exist in dead ball saves. Let me go back to the Tigers because we might actually have one. Um, closers and the best closers in my experience in your uh, franchises tend to uh, tend to have extremely high stuff, lower movement and lower control, and at least two fantastic pitches. So like you're talking into the blue, um, those make for fantastic closers. Uh, we can go into a modern save at some point and take a look at them. Uh, look at guys like that if you guys want. Um, 
But so here, here's an example of someone who you could use as a closer. So we have Ralph Caldwell here. You can see stuff is through the roof. So a Roldus Chapman, exactly, a Roldus Chapman. Um, it is a good closer that you would use. Uh, so you can see phenomenal stuff here. Uh, movement and control, much less. This stuff is going to make up for it. In general, you want your relievers to have higher stuff anyway. Uh, he has at least, th these pitches are fantastic. Three amazing pitches. Mariano Rivera, was he like that? I don't know if he's like that in this game. Um, generally, they're going to hold runners really well, and they have low stamina. Okay. We are done with pitchers. Incredibly oversimplified. I'm sorry, I know. We could literally do, like, an entire three-week thing just on pitchers. Um, I'm sorry if I did not cover something that you wanted on pitchers but i we can't we can't just this, this is just a brief guide on them um so do we have questions before we move on to hitters because hit, hitters are a little bit easier to explain and by a little i mean way easier to explain you would like to see a Science Wednesday show. You would have to talk to the other people on Out of the Park for that. But do, do we have any questions relating to pitchers before we move on to hitters? Um, because we can actually use our guy. I will, I will let you sit. I know there's a delay, so that would be an Alex stream. Yeah, Science, Sa Science Saturday is going to be bad. Love the personality on him. Good teammate never misses a chance to golf. Listen, um, if you want, we can do maybe in July or something. Maybe in June or July. Probably July. We can do a whole thing about team chemistry, but... Really good overview. Ugh, thank you. Hello, Dynamic MLB. All right, there doesn't seem to be that many questions, and f hopefully this stream will be available so you can go back and watch this. Hitters. Okay, let's talk about hitters. Uh, we're not going to talk about fielding yet, and we can't do it on this save. I didn't know golf existed in 1905. So in Death Ball, is the pitcher's movement that drives the low power? Yes. Um, it, I mean, it's both. It's both the movement and the environment um the movement is really what's doing it though because all of the pitchers have high movement players are not getting hits off of them uh when i do dead ball saves i like actually try to like out offense and i'm usually pretty successful at it um so there is an environmental factor to it as well also it depends on where in the dead ball period you are um in the ball, yes. It uh, depends on where in the devil period you are. Like, obviously, 1904 and 1905 look very different from 1917. Am I going to cover global and player strategies, too? No. Since there's no power, you wouldn't care about movement. There is power. There actually is power in the dead ball era. Um, okay. Hitters. Okay, so hitters are a little bit easier to deal with. Um, I would be remiss in not pointing this out, and also your kidneys would murder me if I did not tell you that, in, in his words, contact is a fake stat. And it's being derived from this BABIP rating in the editor. Um, this is this is what's giving you this contact rating. Um, the Babbit the Babbit rating uh, affects a bunch of stuff. Um, it affects your avoid case. It affects a little bit of your power. Um, it's also tied to some of these other batting batted ball profiles. Um, batted ball profile is just like an amalgamation of all of these stats. Um, your kidneys are already murdering you this weekend. Um, I don't want to dive too deep into this. You could play around in the editor yourself, mess with Babbitt, mess with Avoid Gaze, mess with all of this. But yes, contact is not a direct stat that you edit. Um, you have to do it through Babbitt. 
Miller <laughs> Pujols would say that Ty Cobb slaps. Yes, he is very good. Ty Cobb is very good at baseball. Okay, so contact. Contact is trying to emulate the the ball making contact with the bat. <laughs> so players with high contact are more likely to get the ball, the, the bat on the ball and hit it somewhere. Could be a ground out, could be a base hit, could be a home run. Depends on your other ratings. Um, in general, contact is a rating that I would say in your franchise, probably in your perfect team saves too. Um, and in an entire team, yes, it is. When you enter an entire team to have 200 BABIP is crazy. Um, I would say that contact, uh, generally people pick a particular batting rating. They like the most, usually it's either contact, I or avoid Ks. Uh, I like contact the most. I always want players with high contact because they can hit the ball. You're betting Sergeant Mushroom has done that. I'm betting that too. Good at baseball, but apparently not too bright. Yeah. Gap power. Okay, gap power is trying to emulate how well can you hit in gaps. So like basically voiding the shift. Higher gap power means, um, you know, you're more likely when you hit a ball to get it into a place where there is not a fielder. Um, gap in general, I, I don't pay as much attention to it when I'm looking at hitters, but it's a plus if, if you have it. You can get by without, I would say, without as much gap power in your franchises, uh, particularly in a dead ball save like this. It's not as important. However, I'm totally shameful because I play with shifts and stuff and destroy everyone in the dead ball. The gap man is offended. So, <laughs> go to the mall. Okay, home run power. That's power on your, your hit. If you hit the ball, how much power do you have to make it a home run? So, <laughs> pretty straightforward. Players with higher power are have higher chances of getting home runs. With lower, they're not going to hit as many. Um, so that that's, again, pretty straightforward. I, so I has to do with taking pitches. Yeah, ball go far. Exactly. I has to do with taking pitches. So it is how likely you are to have the discipline to take a pitch, no one, two, swing and one not swing. Uh, eye is a stat that actually increases with age. So um, having a lower eye as a younger player and then having that increase is not um, is not uncommon. In other words, I bully the dead ball era people. Um, in the, it is worth noting that in this game compared to 21, I would say that eye is definitely a lot more important. Um, I've noticed that a lot of my players with lower I are performing worse than they did in 21. Um, and avoid Ks! Exactly what it is. It's avoiding strikeouts. How likely is a player to take a walk or to not strike out? So not, so I, I is more like walking, but like avoid Ks is like not striking out, like getting the ball somewhere that is not a strikeout. So maybe like a ground out or a line out or even a walk or just anything that is not striking out. Um, fouling balls off. Yes. Fouling balls off. Uh, another way. Um, you have evidence and witnesses. Uh, but yeah, so is a player for the same everything else but lower avoid K going to get out more? Uh not necessarily. I mean, if you if he were to have 45 avoid K, he would definitely strike out. I would he may not get out more, but he'll strike out more. Um How likely is the batter to make contact is actually contact plus avoid case. Yes. So if you if contact is a little bit like I said, contact's pulling from things and is kind of complicated to contact, but contact Plus avoid case is how likely they are to um, how likely they are to actually make contact. Um, when you when uh, kidneys is talking about like the like Babbitt profile, he means the E of contact home run and avoid case. So, but yeah. So 
before we move on to other batting ratings, do we have questions about my very overly simplified what these are trying to emulate? And yeah, if you remove avoid Ks, it'll bring down contact unless you also boost Babbit or power. Like, yeah, so like I said, you can play around in the editor to see how these stats interact with each other, and I recommend that you do it. Um, I think because of how I have this save set up, it actually won't let me, but I can try to... 110, 125, 172. Okay. Like, I can try to see if I can show it to you, but it may not... Yeah, it's not going to let me do it, um, just because of how I have this set up. Um, but we, we can play around in the next save. Does Avoid K increase or decrease the pitches a batter sees, or do we even know? Um, that is, that, I, I believe the, if I'm understanding what you are asking, that I, that is tied to I. In profile, why is I slash discipline the same thing? I, I think it's just to clarify what, what it's at, like to the user, what it's more of trying to be. So like I, as in like plate discipline seeing pitches as opposed to how well a player can see the entire field we go on game and settings you can rerun scouting to bypass the scout being on uh i don't want to do that though for this this save just because of other stuff that's going on with it um, but you guys can set up your own saves and do that Okay, so if we go into our other batting ratings, batted ball profile, we can see that Ty Cobb here is a line drive hitter. This is just take th this ball profile. I think I can show them, show them to you here, um, if I can find it. Uh, but basically, it's um, you have you have like ground ball and fly ball tendency. So you have like normal spray pull, extreme pull, and then that stuff and then all of this these stats here all of this is coming together to tell you the batted ball profile this is also tied to BABIP so it's it's just a quick way to see ah this is a line drive hitter although like I, I wouldn't trust this but you know pitches is mostly I and avoid K's foul yeah so my understanding is that like pitches being taken is I and then avoid K is fouling but again we're not gonna get into order of operations but so ground ball fly ball is just how likely you are to hit a ground ball versus a fly ball pulling again pulling from the batting ratings from BABIP from all this information okay so we have these these other ratings down here, and I, I feel like I'm explaining this in kind of a mess. Pull and spray does not matter. Um, I, in my experience, I do not believe it matters. I have never seen it make a difference. Um, I'm sure somebody can run a study to tell me whether it does, but I have never seen it make a difference. Um, so, speed, okay. Speed is offensive running speed, not like you offended somebody and you ran away. It's running, running, like, like not base running, but running after, running in an offensive way. So what speed is, look, speed is primarily looking at two things. Speed is looking at the likelihood of picking up an extra base when getting a hit and attempts at stealing. So higher speed players are more likely to turn those singles into doubles and more likely to try to steal. Someone really fast might have offensive offensive speed. The, the higher the running speed, the faster the player runs. Um, but so this is not like related to like your outfielders running in the outfield, unfortunately. So that's what that is. Stealing is successful steals. So uh, somebody like Ty Cobb here who has a 70 stealing is more likely to have a successful steal. The defensive shifts are just cosmetic. 
I mean, I don't have data to support it either way. Um, I mean, gap is a thing, so uh, I, I would be looking at gap over pull and spray. So in a five speed and 95 ceiling, does that mean their chance of successful steals change compared to someone with 99 speed and 95 stealing? So the person with five speed and 95 stealing is probably not going to attempt steals very often, but when they attempt it, they will be successful. Whereas the 99 speed one is going to like just constantly try to, not costly, but they're gonna try to steal a lot more. They will probably have the same, they may not have the same success rate just because they're trying to steal more, but they will be way more aggressive and take more attempts. Um, base running. So base running is how good you run around the bases when players get hits. So if you're on first base and Kid Elberfeld is getting a hit, base running is going to tell you how well Ty Cobb is going to run the bases. Um, so this would be like, oh, he can get a base or he is going to grab, like, not make it to the base in time and be stupid and try to steal home instead. Uh, well, not steal home, but like, like maybe like, let's say he's on second and Kid Elberfeld gets a single, um, poor base running leads to more mistakes. Like he might try to come home. From second when he should stop at third. Um, 99 speed and 50 stealing. Yes, they will get thrown out a lot. Good base running is the difference in difference of scoring or being thrown out at home from second. Yes. Yes. Base running is really important in uh in saves. Speed you can actually kind of ignore. Like you can ignore speed. Base running you can't ignore. Does poor base running mean they may run backwards? You know it would not surprise me if that is something that appears in the game. No, I'm kidding. All right, then everyone's favorite, sacrifice bunt and bunt for hit. Okay, sacrifice bunt. How good are you at bunting to drive runs in or to get players to advance on the base paths? And bunt for hit. How good are you at bunting to get a hit? thought this was going to happen with the chat commands. Who thought they hit a home run and ran the bases backwards? Uh, I think Rafi Devers did something like that last year because he wasn't sure if uh, he got a home run. So speed directly affects success percentage as well. I, I mean, they're... They're semi-related in the sense that it's steal attempts um, versus successful steals. But yeah, so do we have, we actually have to change saves for, um, for hitters, not hitters, for fielders, because these guys don't field very well. But do we have any questions about hitters? We can take a look at some other cool dudes who hit Baseballs. Here's Kid Elberfeld. Um, your sack bunt slider up on a good bunter. Uh, bunting, bunting is weird. There are very specific types of players that um, that bunting can work. I usually don't do a lot of bunting, but there are people successful at it. Um, I'm just bringing up a few people here. I'm looking for something specific, but if I can't find it, that's okay. Is it crack in time? Uh, I mean, unless people have questions about hitters, it will be crack in time. Okay, here's, here's someone. So this is Gene Curtis. This is an example of a player you do not want. So remember how I said contact and avoid Ks are really important? They're like the most important stats, in my opinion. Um, so... This is a type of player you don't want to avoid. This is basically a three true outcomes player. They are going to strike out, walk, or hit a home run. They are very bad for your team. Do not put them on your team or it would make me cry. And you don't want that. 
He's a birdie. I, I like to call them depressing. Actually, this guy is what I would call a tropical fruit bowl because he has all the colors in the rainbow. If you run a small ball strategy or tactician, you'll be bunting a lot. Yes, that's related to like strategy though. So, okay, no one seems to have hitter questions, uh, but if you think of more, feel free to ask them. But hitters are fairly straightforward. Um, we are going to talk about fielding where I'm going to tell it basically I'm going to teach you how to tell what positional player plays. We are going to the Krakens. All right. Okay, so fielders. Fielders are the players that field the ball on your team. We are going to go through every position plus DH and utility. I'm going to explain explain them okay so we are going to move around the diamond also one thing i forgot to mention pitcher defense don't pay attention to it so like if like a pitcher like this like 45 here just don't pay attention like for his position rating doesn't mean anything for pitchers just ignore it this is cracking you up so welcome to the krakens we're, we're now talking about defense Okay, we're going to start with catchers because it has come to my attention that not, not, why did I type catcher? That was really stupid of me. Don't be me. Okay, because it come to my attention that not all of you understand the theory behind catcher ability. Okay, so catchers. Catchers are the people that are behind the plate that catch the baseball from the pitcher. Now, catchers have two ratings. Um, so obviously you have ratings for all positions here, but catchers have two ratings. They have catcher ability and catcher arm. Catcher ability is, you know, the framing, is it's basically everything except the catcher throwing to catch people on steals. So, that's what catcher arm is. Catcher ability is the framing. It's, you know, sitting behind the plate, looking all broody, calling the pitches. Catchers are people too. I mean, here in Boston, we love our catchers, but that is beside the point. Uh, having good catcher ability can actually help your pitchers. It can help them pitch better. We have done, and by, and by we, I mean like, Myself with observed things, Sergeant Mushroom, some other people. In a franchise save, a catcher with high catcher ability can save you, will, will win you like between two to seven more games in a season. Um, Yogi is has poor catcher ability in historical saves. I know, I have him on my team. Um, but let's talk about the theory behind higher catcher ability over offense, because I think that's something that people don't really understand where this comes from. Weren't we all supposed to get the catcher ability snob t-shirts? I mean, I have a catcher ability worshiping emote, but... So, when you're looking at catchers... 90% of the time, 90%, you only care about the catcher ability and nothing else. And this is because, in, in theory, they're going to net you between two to seven games. That doesn't mean that you can just grab a fantastic catcher with 80 catcher ability and call it a day. The idea of having a black hole with fantastic catcher ability relies on you being able to construct a roster to make up that production somewhere else. You need, if you're going to take a really bad catcher, um, in general on like a, 20, like a 20 to 80 skill, I would say like 65 is probably your minimum. So if you're going to take a catcher that cannot hit at all you need to try to make up that offense 
production somewhere else in your lineup because you know you have at least one spot that will not hit. So that's going to be somebody who is going to get on base nearly every time. So like a DH or a, you're usually going to go with a, a position that doesn't have a strong defense, like a first baseman or a left fielder. Most good lineups can survive one black hole. Yes. However, sometimes you're running with multiple. This is why um, in your saves... If you're starting like a 2021 save, this is why Christian Vasquez is really powerful because he's a catcher with good catcher ability that can kind of hit. Or like Real Muto is another example. And by picking them up, you can take a black hole in another position. Yeah, you should not have a no bat catcher, shortstop, and center fielder. Pick two and make up the production somewhere else. Do we have questions about catchers before we move on? Because catchers are a little bit different from the rest of the the defenders. Uh, Like I said, 90% of the time, no matter what your lineup is, you're probably going to take the higher catcher ability guy regardless. There's some exceptions to this. So if, for example, you're playing a, a franchise and you have a, like, stupidly fantastic team where the two to seven wins are not going to make a difference because you're just obliterating the competition or like Yogi Berra is exists on your team like what is the relationship between position rating and ability uh it, it just looks at this the it's a number that it comes up with based on the defensive ratings in general you can ignore it you can go actually go down to the editor here this is actually where i would uh really consider you go to the editor because that way you can see how much they're trained so 200 is max so aiden gaffney here it says he, he's actually going to be higher uh if we we see where he he will end up as a catcher at least for his position rating he he's actually still going to be 65 but he's it's, he still hasn't fully trained um but you can go and mess with this. This this save we can actually mess with uh, ratings. Um, and does catcher ability determine pass balls and errors? E- yes. Um, that's also dependent on the pitcher a little bit. You put defense first in those positions. I mean, I'll show you what I've done. Some of them have to be able to hit. Um, in my saves... This is, I usually take the black holes at catcher and center field. That's usually what I do. But you you can you have to be able to construct your roster though in a way that's going to make sure like let's say you have a black hole at center field and you need to make up that production somewhere else so maybe you take a second baseman who can't uh, defend as well. You have to make sure if you have a poor defender you're surrounding them by better defenders. And that if you have someone who can't hit, that you have that production being made up somewhere else. That goes into roster construction, which again, we could spend an entire stream going over how to most efficiently construct your roster. But that also goes into like things like personality and it gets team chemistry. So it gets kind of complicated. Okay. We are now going to move around the diamond. First base. So, first base. Um, First base is kind of one of those positions where defense doesn't really matter as much. I tend to like having someone who's decently good at first base. Uh, You can use position ratings uh, for first base, but I would say... um, So we're going to talk about what defensive ratings are, and we're just going to stick on this first baseman here, and then we'll go back and talk about the, uh, talk about the, uh, how you identify different positions. So infield range. Infield range, so in general range, is a player's ability to get to a ball in play. Higher range means you're more likely to get there. Lower range means you're not. Um, Error. How likely are you to commit an error? 
Um, higher, less likely. Lower, more likely. Arm. How far you can throw and how well you can throw. And turn double play, how good are you at turning double plays? The, again, they're, they're pretty straightforward. Now, first baseman, and if you have questions about those ratings, feel free to ask them. Clone Chuck Norris and play him at every position. <laughs> I've done that before. And how much because you use shift does increase defense demand at first base? Um, I mean, in general, first base is like a position you can skimp out on defense and put a bat in. Um, I don't find if shifts affect it too much. So one of the things that affects first base tremendously, as TF Lama has pointed out in the chat, is height. Um, height makes a huge difference. Taller players can play first, first base more effectively than shorter players because they get height boost. Um, does turn double play apply to everyone involved in the double play or only the guy making the literal turn? Uh, it, inv it involves everyone, in my experience. Um, so I would say look at height. Height is probably a more important, the most important thing for first base. Uh, you can basically stick an elephant at first base and not have to worry. Like this, these defensive ratings are not good. Stick somebody who can who can hit at first base. Um, it is the, yes, twins. You are definitely decent hitter. High error, height range, double double plays a bonus. Exactly. Um, there's no real restrictions on it. Just stick a hitter there. This is a great place to to make up some offense based on your catcher. So we can see that this guy's a bat, and he has basically no ratings here. Okay, so second base. Do I have someone here? Do I want? Who do I want to bring up for second base? Um. Okay, so. Second base. Second base is where you stick your guys that cannot play third base or shortstop. So your second basemen tend to be in the green for everything, range, error, arm, turn, double play. I would say the most important things are range, turn, double play, and error. You don't really need as higher of as high of an arm um this guy's actually a stellar second baseman if i show if i bump him up to 200 um he's actually an 80 grade second baseman but you you can generally have somebody in the green for your defensive ratings uh for second and be pretty successful again 20 to 20 to 80 ratings here um my second baseman should be David Fletcher. Anything else will not do. David Fletcher is a good second baseman um, for your 2021 starts. Even close to a decent shortstop on either base. Listen, listen. Yes. We're going to ignore that for the sake of this. Um, but so this guy, this guy is a natural second baseman. He has lower arm. He has good range, error, and double play. Most second basemen are going to look a little bit uh less than that they're gonna look a little bit more like this turn double play important for your second baseman range is good this guy is not as good of a second baseman as i would like um but you know we do what we can someone like this would be totally fine you could get it done um okay third base where arm is what we like so third base is your infielders with the best arm because they need to be able to throw all the way around. They need to be able to throw home. They need to be able to throw to second base. They need to be able to throw to first base. They need to be able to throw shortstop. They need to be able to throw all the way around the infield. So you're going to stick your higher arm guys at third base that does not mean you can stick people with like 20 range and 20 double play at third base you do need them to have in my experience decent error um and passable range and turn double play 
Um, otherwise, they're not going to be successful. But the way you identify a third baseman, if you're just looking at a glance um, and um, you're trying to figure out what position they naturally should play, look and see if their arm is the best thing they've got. If it is, they're probably a third base. Um, third base in defense in this game is more important than it was in the last game. So you do want decent defenders there. The only blue defense arm, probably a third base. Yes. That is the way to come across. Okay, shortstops. Shortstops, you want them to have blue. Just just all the blue in your defensive ratings. Uh, turn double play is not as important. But, um... Black, no, not turn double play. Um, arm. Arm is, you could have a little bit less. Um, but you really just want everything blue. Uh, your range, your error, your arm, your double play. These guys have to be able to do it all. Shortstop, all of the blue. They need, yes, exactly, Cito. They need to look like a Smurf. Um, you do not want green, if possible. Light green we can deal with, but in an ideal world, you want to have all the blue. If you're going to take a black hole position, shortstop is one of your opportunities. Yes, you can survive a green arm, but I would say, um, if possible, you want blue. Um, if you're going to take a black hole, this is a position to do it. And I have an example of, oops, not that pitcher that needs to get traded, but someone like this. Um, you could also, in theory, put it shortstop and hope that you have off uh, offensive production somewhere else. Eiffel 65, yes. Think think about Eiffel 65 with your shortstops. Um, I'm a weirdo. I actually like, I, I sometimes will not take a defense first shortstop, depending on how I've constructed my team. But uh, in general, you, you want to, I would say, take pick shortstop or center fields for your black hole. Um, you can get offense plus awesome uh, defense. That's a plus. Okay, do we have questions about our infielders before we move on to the outfield? Because outfields is kind of fun. Outfield is... The best. No, no it's, it's all relative. Oh, Stinkins. I, I am gl always glad to have blue. Most bat for shortstops can be moved over to second or third base. Hard not to just go with the blue sh shortstop. Yes. Um, yes. Again, this is going to depend on your league. It's going to depend on um, the era you're in, what players are available. Jumping back to first place, can players ever change heights? I've never seen that. I have never seen a player change height. Um, I don't think it can happen. But, all right, we're, we're going to get into the outfielders. I'm actually going to start with center field instead of going left, center, right. We're actually going to start with center, then do right, and then do left because I think it's easier to explain that way. Okay, center field. And as also outfield ratings. <laughs> They're getting old, they can shrink a bit. Oh, if you draft a high schooler, he'd possibly grow a couple inches more. I, I think that can happen actually. I do think that happens. I usually don't pay attention to that. When I'm when I'm doing my teams, I'm actually I I usually don't decide whether or not, or not they're going to play first base until way later. So, but I do, I do think they can get taller. Um, just not vertical. Uh, okay, so outfield range, same as infield range. Your ability to get the ball in the outfield. Outfield error. Your likelihood of having an error. An arm. Ability to throw from the outfield. Again, same as the infield stuff, except apply it to the outfield. Okay, center fielders. So center fielders are in the center of your field. And in most ballparks, in, in most ballparks, there, there's, some, there's some ballpark factor stuff that goes on here with the outfield specifically. 
but um most ballpark yeah most young prospects are middle of the field yeah uh but yeah so so most ballparks have a deeper center field than left or right left or right and um because of that you need them to be able to move to a lot of places in the outfield so you want to see that outfield range just in the blue for for your center fielders just in the blue error uh in general you want to have decent error error on uh your outfielders particularly center field um in the green is usually fine um blue is better obviously but green and center field you can survive on arm you generally want a decent arm um i would say you know light green blue um for that in, in general range is the more important of the uh of, of the three ratings for center field but you have to you have to have green for the other two i would say at least um, those are going to be your good center fielders. This is a position where you can take a black hole. Um, this is where I choose to take my black hole usually is in center field. Um, that isn't my catcher. Um, I, I usually choose to do center field. Um, but you, you can do shortstop instead. Either works. But yeah. So that's center fielders. Okay, right fielders. So right fielders are very similar to center fielders. But again, check your ballpark factors a bit. Um, like if you play in Fenway Park, your right field's actually the deepest part of your ballpark. Right fielders need good range, good error, and great arm. So those profiles that you see with like lower range and error and then high arm, those are right fielders. However, I you generally want them to be good at making plays with both range and error. And the reason why the, the arm thing is so important is because, think about it, if you have a ball in play that's going to right field, the right fielder may need to be able to throw home and they have to throw from much further than the center fielder or the left fielder. You try not to take black holes. Sometimes it is unavoidable. This fulcrum changed. So yeah. So in general, when you see your defensive ratings, high arm, lower range and error, that's usually a right fielder. Um, but you still want your range and error to be good, not terrible. Left field is where you stick your uh actually i don't have any bad left fielders here but left field is where you stick your outfielders that cannot field <laughs> um this is usually a bat position um where it's where you hide people yes um oh i forgot to mention I'll, I'll go back to that in a second but uh left field is where you hide dudes good way to put it um it's where you stick your outfielders that can't field, particularly that have terrible, terrible, terrible range. It's a major, <laughs> yeah. So you're generally putting a bat in left field. Again, check your ballpark factors to make sure you're not in some strange dimension where uh, left field is actually the deepest part of your ballpark, but. Um, but in general, it's negligible, the defense there. You can just take a bat. Uh, if you're playing a historical or a live start and you're playing in Fenway Park, it, you can literally just stick anybody there. Um, but just briefly before we move on, I more, the moral of the story is have good damn fielders. Um, the moral of the story is you want passable defense at most positions. If you're gonna skimp on defense, it's gonna be at first and left. You can get away with it at second if everyone around them is fantastic. 
But, but briefly there, uh, just briefly going back to shortstop uh, third base, uh, you can't have left-handed players at those positions. Like, the game won't let you do it because they can't throw there. They have to be right-handed. Forgot to mention that. Boston Cough Hanley. Okay, so do we have outfield questions or should we move on to DH and utility? We need you there. Game is biased against lefties. That that is fair. Okay, so does not appear to be any questions about the outfielders. Okay, so we're actually going to go back to the guy I showed you for left field because he's actually for DH. DHs, if you're playing in American League, American League um, Park, late third base back in the pre-dead ball era, it doesn't let you do it. It doesn't let you do it. Um... DH is where you stick a guy that can hit but cannot field to save their life. Um, this is a great position for, like, a J.D. Martinez or, like, an, I guess, an Albert Pujols. Um, left-handed spatula as well as Kansas there. That's funny. That's funny. Um, but, yeah, so if you're playing in a, in a league that has a DH, stick someone who can't field in DH because... It, it's a great way just to get an extra bat in there. I mean, if they can field and your team construction is all about, like, positional versatility, then, like, more power to you, like, for doing that. But in general, yeah, Nelson Cruz is just a freak. Nelson Cruz is another great example. Thank you, Twins34. Um, but just just stick someone who can hit there. Don't You don't need to worry about their... Um, position we actually are, are letting this guy go next season and our replacement dh is actually positionally versatile um it's going to be this guy but um if you're in a league or you're trying to you have like a really great prospect that can't play anywhere but is fantastic at hitting dh okay so utility um in the modern isn't he a lefty? I don't know. Can out of the park handle switch pitchers? It does not. Um, in baseball, generally you'll you'll have utility guys, so guys that can play in a bunch of positions, uh, all over the field. You know, people like Brock Holt, Kike Hernandez. Um, there's other ones. Uh, where they generally play a lot of positions, maybe not fantastic at all the positions, but they generally play a bunch of them. Those are utility guys. You generally want a few of them on your team. Uh, he's not going to, I guess right now he's sort of utility uh, here. These are guys that just play a bunch of uh, positions. In general, I mean, like, you don't need to worry about their hitting as much. Don't have them be black holes. Have them be able to hit at least a little bit. Um, but like, they're primarily there just so you can have somebody substitute defensively. Um, you can also use them occasionally as pinch hitters. So like, here's an example of a utility guy. Uh, he's not the, the greatest bat, but like he can play a bunch of positions and that's where he's valuable. Um, that's like a really good thing for perfect draft. Here's another utility. They'll play different ones. Um, in general, I find with your team, you want to have like an infield and an outfield utility. Sometimes you can get lucky and find a bunch of them. Yeah, Jeff McNeil. Um, good pinch runners. Yes, you can put uh, pinch runners there as well. So like Dendero here, base running is really great. Um, Baja here can hit. You use these guys just when you need them. Uh, we have Danny Hooper. He, he, he just basically runs around the, the field whenever we need them. Okay. So. 
we have, we're, we're at the end. We're at the end of our ratings thing. Any questions, any mistakes, anything that you want me to go over? Um, because what we can do next is we can go into a live start and look at players and talk about them if you want. So we can do that. Um, colloquial irony, not literal irony. So we, we can do that. We can talk about uh, good players if you do a live start. Um, I, I can't really do much of a perfect team with that, uh, but we can do that um, if you guys want. You can ask questions. We can take a look at who you, you guys can request players to look at. Um, we can also maybe, we'll do that for a little bit, I guess, and then we'll, we can we can end on a perfect draft. Uh, there will, there, don't worry, there will actually be, there's no bingo, but I, I will do a giveaway at the end. <laughs> South pause without Googling. <laughs> I used to know the reason, actually, but I've forgotten it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go into this live start that I created the other day, uh, specifically for this stream. And Cardinal fan will be happy. The first player we will look at is Mike Trout. I will even give him the nickname of Chuck Norris. Okay. <laughs> I should play that when I uh, do the giveaway. Um, I cannot play music, but um, but yeah. Okay, so here's here's our buddy. Our buddy Mike Trout, Chuck Norris. Our buddy Chuck Norris. So Chuck Norris is actually, act, he can actually field. Um, he's, he's actually really good at fielding. Those are the world. I've turned on 100% scouting for this just so we can get a better sense of what these guys look like. Um, so... You can see that he's very, very good at hitting. This is all stuff you like to see. Um, I don't like this low avoid case, but these other stats are just so great. His fielding's passable. I would stick him in center field if I had no one else. You, But, like, you could use him as a, a DH, I think, more successfully. Uh, one thing to keep in mind about live and just 2020 starts um, is and I I have problems with this. Um, a lot of times their fielding will automatically be 200, which is max. When in many cases, a lot of the younger players should not have max experience at these positions. So just be aware of that. Um, make sure to go into the editor and check if you're not sure. But here he is. He is fantastic at hitting. His personality. Uh, I don't have personality on. I don't think I can turn that on and we can go look at him so he has great personality this is somebody that you have on your team just keep him you can use him in center all right extra drawing since you got it right okay um one thing i do want to look at here is i do want to show you an actual closer but Grudge for burning down the Rangers a month or so ago. Yeah, listen. Listen, that is all your fault for having that. Us trading for Trout and then just ruining the Rangers. So we're going to look at a closer, except we're not going to look at Matt Chapman because... Well, not Matt Chapman. Uh, a roll this Chapman. We're not going to look at Matt Chapman either, but we're not going to look at a roll this Chapman because why would we do that? when we can look at Matt Barnes. So here you can see a pretty pretty typical closer profile that I was talking about before with the really high stuff, lower movement, lower control, but that stuff is making up for it and at least two in the blue pitches. He has three, which makes him absolutely fantastic. Uh, this is something that you start to see as you move through the years um, or in like fictional saves. These guys are great. These are your closers. Sometimes they'll have like a lot of stamina. Don't use them as a starter, just use them as a closer. Um, if he had more stamina, you could use, you could actually probably use Chapman, not Chapman, uh, Barnes as a reliever. Um, um, we'll, 
we'll bring up actually i was looking at i was trying to find a decent uh utility to bring up earlier um so we're gonna look at his buddy his teammate uh kike hernandez because when i was comparing utility guys he came out on top um you can see that in your ch your traditional like start here um you're gonna have a utility that can play like a ton a ton of positions um i i would take one of these guys usually even if they're not great you want one of these guys on your team that can just play anywhere um at least at the start of the game you can once you start to get into your save you can start to train people in the minors to you know be a little bit better but someone like this is valuable on your team because it means you don't have to have as many bench guys and you can have more pitchers if that's something you like to do okay who want what what do we want to look at what players do we want to look at um what, what do we want a good look at here um at least for or like questions about certain players or certain types of players this is or certain ratings this is this is really all for you guys um so yankee fan okay we can look five starters run five leaders in a seven man bench you laugh but i do that <laughs> i actually do that um here's how i do it i stick starters in my bullpen <laughs> <laughs> let's get some extreme players like Javi Baez. Okay, let's look at Javi Baez. Um, Javi Baez, I, I, he's Javier, duh. Um, famous for causing the pirates to just get so confused. Um, this is a great shortstop. I actually don't think he's the best in the game, but he's great. Um, he'll he'll hit a bit this is this so this is a situation where you'll have a shortstop who can hit a little bit meaning that you can kind of take uh he's not going to be a void he's not gonna just not hit um this production for a 2021 start is passable um the avoid k's is low the i is low but it's better than a lot of other shortstops See, this ain't one guy with at least 60 stamina in the bullpen. I have, like, a lot. Um, if we're talking about best shortstops at the start, after you let Simmons go, we're, well, so Simmons is the guy you want to get on your team. Um, this, this profile, this batting profile, is actually fine. Um, the contact and avoid Ks are what we like to see. Um, he, he will do decently. Um, he's hitting, this is obviously, I did this when it was live, he was 238, he'll, he'll probably remain around there. But you can see here, um, all in the blue with a little bit green, this is what you want for a shortstop. He's expensive, um, but he's, he's good. Uh, if you're going to do a, a live uh, start or a 2021 start, Simmons is your best bet. Or a shortstop. Okay. What what other players do we want to look at? Um, we'll look at two more. And then I will do the giveaway and we can do a perfect draft at the same time. Nick Madrigal. Okay, you want to see Nick Madrigal. Genies, really. And Gene Simmons is better. Um, so Nick Madrigal, another very extreme player. This this is this is a second baseman. Um, you can see he doesn't really have the positional stuff to play um, anywhere else. He's not tall enough for first base. He um, he can't play third. He doesn't have the arm. He can't play shortstop. Doesn't have the 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 blue, but um, he can play second. So this is an instance where you're taking a weaker second baseman, but you're taking a hitter here. Um, so this contact avoid case is going to be great. Um, he'll, he'll hit decently. This is a fine person to have on your team. 
and you'll show yourself out. Um, but yeah, Cynic Magical, second baseman. Um, one thing that's nice about him is he's a captain, so you might actually want to keep him on your team even if he were not as good of a bat, just simply because he has that captain. Okay, we can do one more player. One more player. You can, um, first base, if he's in need. I, I wouldn't put him at first. Um, let's see what he looks like at first base. We can do that. 55 first base. I mean, I wouldn't put him there. Um, he's not really a first baseman. I think you could make better decisions and put somebody else there. What does captain do get? Captain has to do with team chemistry. Um, it helps your, your team uh, it, with team leadership, so everyone gets along better. Um, we can do a whole other thing on chemistry if you want, but that will also take a while to explain. Um, but but captains are captains are cool. Okay, so one last player, and then how about we? I will do the perfect uh, per points giveaway, and we can do a perfect draft at the same time. Arenado. Sure, let's look at Arenado, who's probably one of the best, if not the best, third baseman in a start here. So, Arenado here, fantastic. So, he's hitting well. We love to see hitting well. He's also a captain. We love to see it. His range, that arm, great. Uh, and turn double play, fantastic. And by fantastic, I mean he's third baseman, so it doesn't really matter. We got Miguel Cabrera. Here we can, okay. I will do. I will do you one. I will give you Miguel Cabrera before we move on because go Tigers beating the Yankees. What a sight. <laughs> um. <sighs> He shows bright spots of his former self. I mean, I'm not going to say what I think about what you should do with Miguel Cabrera. I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson, so I'm not going to say anything about Miguel Cabrera. All right, and what what's Williams' pitching ratings? I don't know. Let's take a look. I don't think he has any. Or if he does, they're low. Yeah. Doesn't have any. I'm not gonna off the old players. I'm not saying anything about Cabrera. At all. Okay, so that's been fun. Uh, you guys can continue to ask questions, or if I don't, I didn't explain something in the best way, or I was not clear, or you think I'm a liar, or you want, or you hate my guts, or anything, you can always message me uh, and ask questions. So you you can um you you can just DM me, and I will answer your question to the best of my ability, or point you in the direction of resources. Uh, to give you an answer if I can. You can saw me in the corner. He's on the Dodgers now. Like he's doing okay on the Dodgers. I mean, I I think he's fine now. Camille Mario Fox. Okay, so I'm gonna open up. Yeah, it, exactly, Luktar. You can you can phrase it like that. Uh, I don't mind. So I'm gonna because everyone is leaving after after they got their drops. But uh, for those of you who stuck around. Those of you stuck around, you can enter the giveaway. Um, so we're gonna do perfect draft, I guess. Yeah, we're it worked out. Um, we're gonna do a perfect draft, I guess. So, because I don't really have anything else, it's I'm gonna have to exit out of the game and and restart it, just because uh, perfect team is super rude. Which is why I don't do anything with Perfect Team. Click it and tick it. 
yeah, go ahead, enter the enter the giveaway. Um, have fun with that. Uh, so do we want to do a legit perfect draft based on what what we've all learned now about ratings, or do we want to just be ridiculous and not actually do anything seriously? I will leave that up to you guys. Which one am I gonna do? You want a straight up? Okay, one vote for straight up. Let's try for something serious. Remember, I'm not good at perfect teams, so I would solely be going trying to construct a roster. Use tonight's lessons. Okay, this is gonna fail because I'm, spoiler, I'm not good at perfect team. I don't know metas, I only know ratings. But I guess we will try. Um, I also don't really, like, I know that there's specific strategies in Perfect Draft with, like, what players you take for positional versatility, which is pitch, number of pitchers and number of position players that I'm not good at. So, the most sellout defensive team possible. I really love that, but most people want us to use our lessons here. Okay, so we're just going to sign up for whatever this first one is, because, like, I don't have the time to try to figure out what's optimal. As long as you don't pick relievers in the first three rounds, you'll have a chance. I mean, usually, I don't think you would want to. Okay, so let's see who we have here. Ned Hanlon, Roy Campanella, Robin Roberts, Billy Pierce, Jimmy Rollins, and Al Rosen. Um, let me take a look here. I kind of like Catcher because I know he can hit. We like to see this higher Catcher ability. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to get another catcher that is good. And everyone's telling me not to take the catcher. Oh, dear. What have I walked into? See, like, here's the problem. In Perfect Team, I see all this blue, and people are like, these players suck. And I'm like, this is fantastic. Like, if I had a player like this in a franchise, I, I would be fantastic. I I think the smart play here is the catcher. Um, if I'm using the lessons I have learned from myself. Um, but it's not just the defense. It's also the offense. It means that I don't have to worry about um, a black hole. Okay, let's look here. Okay, we have Mariano Rivera. Good reliever, but Lowry said not to take one. Um, okay, we have a second baseman here. Passable second base. We could do that for the bat. Um, we could take a relief pitcher, which probably don't want to do. We could take starter. Probably should take the starter. Um, catcher's tire easier. I'm probably going to take three catchers. Harry Hooper, this is not terrible. Um... Monty Cross, uh, this is decent. I think we take the pitcher. I do think we take the pitcher. Um, but I, I do like Mariano here. Like, I know we're not supposed to take relievers, but this does look like only a five-game tournament? I don't know. You think I paid attention to what I signed up for? When in doubt, take the red hat. I mean, that's the best we've done, actually. Uh, I'm going to take the starter just because I think that's the play. Okay. Okay. What do we have here? We have Omar. Omar is a possibility. Um, we do need the shortstop. Kind of an authority figure, am I? I never claimed to be an authority about Perfect Team. In fact, I specifically said I wasn't. Oh, yeah. You think I can read the New York Stock Exchange up there? Um, how's Milan looking? I, I think we go Omar, to, to be honest with you. Uh, because he looks like he can play shortstop. I also may not know what I'm talking about. But we're going to take Omar. Take Kovaleski. 
because of the picture. You can read the stock exchange for me. Okay, thank you. I mean, I just took a picture. I mean, I, I would be okay with taking Kovaleski. We can take Kovaleski. I just don't know if we're going to get a better shortstop. But we'll take the picture. And if I fail, it's your fault. Okay. So, what do we have here? Do, do, do. Hey, it's Dustin Pedroia. I want to take Dustin Pedroia, but I don't know if that's the smart thing. I do like Dobie Moore here. Uh, not as a short stop, but as like a DH do. Uh, Fraser is a top tier reliever. Oh, he does look good. Means I have to look at all of these. Um, we could take Turner. Turner wouldn't be a bad DH, um, just from looking at that. Um, Davy Garcia doesn't look terrible, but we don't want to take another pitcher. Crochet, crochet's not bad. Turner and Hooch. I don't know who Hooch is. Okay, okay. Um, we're going. Whitaker has better defense than Dustin. Yeah. From before I was born. Uh, I don't know. You don't know when I was born. I was born in 476 AD. Those crochet ch chat rooms are rough out here? No, the knitting ones are bad. And don't even get me started on the toxicity of the online knitting community. I actually like Hoblitzel, but I don't like the defense. Like, I would take him or Turner, but not both. Um, we do need... See, here's my problem. If I were actually playing this like a franchise, I would just stick more at second. But I guess we'll go with him. Is that really true about knitting rooms? Yes. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm obligated to take crocheting. This guy would be an okay closer. Um, you know, we're going to grab him and Turner, and we're going to move later. Okay, okay, okay. We have another catcher. We always have to check the catchers. 70. Um, tempted. That's another DH. <laughs> okay, um, I don't know. You're live. Do you have multiple positions? No. I, I don't know who I'm supposed to pick here. We need outfielders. Uh, okay, actually, you're a fantastic left fielder, Lou Johnson. I'm thinking Lou Johnson and like a pitcher maybe. Grace is good. Oh, I have to take Grace, otherwise DRC will be mad at me. So we're gonna do that. Um, I I like Lou Johnson in left fields, but I really like Adam Eaton in right, and we can stick a banana in left field, so we're going with Eaton. See, like, I just don't know what the card is. I'm just using the, uh, I'm just using my, uh, knowledge of what I think cards don't do. Okay, Max Carey. I've had Max Carey in franchises. Um, so you know what? We're taking Max Carey. Oh, and we're taking Carl Hubble. Stream legend Carl Hubble. It is decided. I will look at. Yeah, yeah, you're not a center fielder. Here's an example of not a center fielder. This guy's a left fielder. Watch my time. I am watching my time. Do not worry. But yeah, we are going with the this the stream legends of Max Carey and Carl Hubble. Okay. Let's take a look here. Hey, it's Adam Ottavino. He did really well today getting out of a jam. Um Okay, I have four starters. I don't actually have relievers. Okay, Didi Gregorius. Are any of you guys utilities? Can you get, 
Why do you guys only play one position? Like, oh, Rafael Delis makes me angry, so I'm not picking him. All right. Dobert's good. We have a first baseman and a DH, so I don't want to take him. Cliff Heathcote always makes me think of Heathcliff from Wuthering Heights. Okay, you can play multiple outfield positions. We can stick you in left field. Perfect. Love it. Is he part of the knitting community? <laughs> um, I want to take another pitcher. Right, probably a reliever. Jackie Brown or Delise? No, Delise makes me angry. I'm not taking Delise. Could take Otto, but like we already took somebody here. Oh, you're you're just you're you're, you're not good. Um, he does not. This would be a great dead ball pitcher. I have four starting pitchers. I only need relievers. All right, we are going to grab... We're going to take an extra starter to stick in the bullpen. Because that's how this works. Probably not. Probably not. Okay, so I need another catcher. I need a second baseman. And then utility guys and relievers. So let's see if we can't find... Oh, it's Gus Sir. He is also a stream legend, but we don't need him. No, we're going to take him, I think. Um, I picked up somebody who was a f fake. No, Justin Turner was the fake. Okay. Arias. Let's look at Arias. Ah, we are taking Arias because he can play, like, everywhere. Uh, we still won't have an actual second baseman, though. Not second base, an actual third baseman. Felipe Lopez, can you play third base? No, you can't. All right. Um, Lopez has multiple positions. No, he doesn't. I need Boardwalk Brown if he pops up. I mean, I'm just going to grab another reliever that looks hopefully nice. I don't, I don't know. Uh, Dylan Bundy has lots of pitches, so he, he wins so far. <laughs> Aaron Cook, great dead ball pitcher. Wouldn't use him in any other time period. Yeah, I don't know. Howie Nunn, pretty good closer. Um, but we already took, we already took some, uh, some people who can close. Uh, maybe we'll take, like, another closer-esque guy later, but oh, Milwaukee's not bad, but no, we're gonna go with Bundy and Arias, I think. Oh, I don't want Sir anymore. Okay. <clears throat> okay, eight minutes. Oh, look, it's Bingo Damas, and this is Baseball Bingo. We found our, our, our third baseman. We're taking Bingo Damas. <laughs> Don't take my bony. Um, how about you? Not you. I should have taken the 70 catcher. Alright. I guess we need in, we do need infield and outfield help and pitch help. Let's grab somebody who can do something. Uh, oh. Oh. Jock Menefee. Congratulations, you have made the team. Because he can kind of pitch, but he can also hit and sort of do the outfield. So, welcome to the team. Okay. Okay. Oh, Kike can play everywhere. We were talking about him earlier, so uh, Kike makes the team. And we probably should pick up... I'm scared, so I'm taking the catcher. So... We're gonna do that. 
Okay, okay. Um, oh, now we have two more catchers. Um, Dom Nunez. Okay, well, none of them are as good as the one we got. Like, if like if Ali Sanchez pops up, we're grabbing him, too. So, Frank Taveras. Oh, he, we had him on a team, but we don't need him. We need pitching and versatility at this point. Also, probably a shortstop adjacent guy. Um, let's grab... Chris Gomez, just because we don't have, like, a true shortstop. So we're going to do that. If you draft a perfect, our team will play an attorney after Sunday with a live player. Yes, I believe so. Um, And I have seven pitchers, so I probably need more. Dwayne Josephson, I didn't look at you. Okay, third baseman, Coco LaBoy. That's that's a name. I have five minutes, but we're nearly done. I'm gonna take another Sure, Jerry Garvin. We'll we'll take Jerry Garvin as well. One there's only four games max of this tourney. That's what they always say. <sighs> Okay, okay, so now we probably, Shad Berry, that's, that's fun. He plays multiple positions, so let's grab him. Um, I don't know who we take. Tavares, maybe, I, I, I think we need, to... we have seven, we have eight pitchers, we have eight pitchers, um, Tabata. You, you can play Sammy Hale. Okay, you know what? We're gonna grab, we're gonna grab uh, Tavares. Oh, I got, I sold something, sweet. We're gonna grab these dudes and then last round. Okay, okay. So let's just take, I don't know. Well, there's Rafael Marchand who we're not gonna take. Um, I mean, I'm thinking we just grab the infielder we'll take, we'll grab, I don't know, Clarence Jones, that's a fun name, but you can't hit, uh, Pilar, I mean, Pilar will sometimes dive into balls to catch things, so we'll go, we'll go with him. Uh, how about Mel Clark? No. Chelarino Sanchez. That is a wonderful name. Um, sure, we will grab um, Newt Randall. That is also a lovely name. Let's grab Newt Randall. Why not? We <laughs> mostly got on base. Um... Sure, Anthony Castro, and sure, sure, I don't know, I think even here. Okay, so, roster management, what did the AI do? Kovaleski, Audie Clark, Garrett Crochet, uh, Jackie Brown, is there Carl Hubble? We like to see Carl Hubble. Jock Manaphy. As the close, I wouldn't use him as the closer, but I guess that yeah. Actually, if everyone here, he he would probably has to be the closer. Um. Okay. So you know, no. Sam Howard's the closer. You are middle relief. There we go. I'm doing this because he has high stuff and two good pitches. 
weekly addition of turn you have a draft routine what if you should i don't know okay so we put max carry in center field we put mark grace at first base we put campanella at catcher turner is the dh we like to see it eaten and right Okay, how am I doing? Am I better or worse than Dishnet? Araya is at second. Not in, probably not Araya is at second. The Moss at third. Coat there. Gomez at shortstop. Um, don't want pitch. I want batting ratings. Why is it not? There we go. Okay, we have Barton if the starter is tired. We have Shad Berry taken over. We have Kike who can play. Actually, Kike might be better at second. I'm gonna write and nah, it's negligible. Um, Danny Mendick, Newt Randall. Okay, we're gonna hope this is good i don't know what sliders exist we're gonna just hope that this is gonna work do do we agree do we not agree um i i tried to apply the lessons we have learned dish goes out first round every week i mean my i sometimes make it to round two but what do we say <laughs> what do we say going two hours you say this is good let's well, i like to live dangerously let's let's just go random in our strategy and submit this team you say bedtime okay let's do the giveaway then all right, let's close it, and I will pull three winners. If you win, contact me on Twitch or Discord. All right, winner number one, AX1 Campbell. Okay, nice, nice. Winner two, DS2744B. I'm seeing a trend here. Maybe you have to have two letters and then a number. Uh, okay, and winner number three. Hey, it's Vulcan! Vulcan2139. Okay, uh, winners, contact me on Twitch or Discord. I will type in the chat. Congratulations to everyone. Uh, there I am in the chat. You can click my name and hit whisper to, uh, to give me your perfect team username. Uh, if I have that information, you will get your perfect points. So congratulations to the winners. Um, thank you all for showing up. I hope edu the education on what ratings are was helpful. Um, if you guys want to see some other sort of tutorial-like thing, we can do that on another month with five weeks. For two years in the way um but yes uh tomorrow you have dish nuts stream perfect team weekly prep there's going to be streams throughout the week there's going to be tj with kbo on monday you're going to have tj and alex with desert dreaming on tuesday there'll be this week a perfect team on thursday and you know this week in Perfect Team Weekly Showdown next Friday. Uh, we will be back next week with more actual bingo with a new team. Uh, so we're going to have to see what team we get. Uh, I'll have to ask my mom to predict again what she thinks that we're going to get. Um, she correctly got the Mets this time. So maybe, maybe she is. Maybe she's, uh, you know, psychic or something. We'll see. Um, but yes, that will do it. Um, I have my own channel if you're interested stream out of the park a lot um on tuesday i will maybe do perfect team type stuff 
uh, as well as talking about Tampa Bay. So yeah, that's going to do it. Um, congratulations, winners. Please message me on Twitter or Discord with your perfect team username uh, so I can get those points. Uh, get those points. Uh, have a fantastic week. You've been a great audience and I will talk to you all soon. Uh, and if not, uh, I will see you guys next week. All right. Bye bye.